Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Salam sejahtera I usually speak without a piece of paper in my hands but I've decided to put my remarks on a piece of paper in hopes that I could leave it for the graduates so that they could look at it they could criticize it and hopefully they could be inspired by it. Chairman Safendri, Pa Agus Wijoyo, a very dear friend of mine, who happens to be the chairman of the National Resilience Institute and also the chairman of the foundation, members of the advisory board, Ibu Sri Mastuti from the Ministry of Education and Culture, and the representative from the Ministry of Research and Technology. Members of the faculty, parents, family, and especially the graduates, including Dewi from Bali. <laughs> As societies have evolved over the last many millennia, they've always shown a predisposition even a predilection for survival by way of the biological, ecological, economic, religious, technological, cultural, political, and geopolitical developments or upheavals that stare at or confront them. Some societies have displayed humility some others indifference, vigilance, or even hubris over some of these changing forces. As a result of which, some have been able to obtain a seat at the table, some have not, and some have even attained a position of leadership with respect to the others. As we continue to harvest the rainwater of progress, Humanity's constant has been the continuing change of the global contour, starting with as far back as the stupendous volcanic eruption of Toba around 75,000 years ago, arguably a cataclysmic event which could have precipitated the cognitive revolution. Thereafter, followed by the planet's melting of the ice, the agricultural revolution, the shift from polytheism to monotheism, proselytization of Christianity by the Romans, Islamic intellectual projections throughout the Umayyad, the Abbasid, and the Ottoman empires, the European Renaissance personified by Leonardo da Vinci, William Shakespeare, and Isaac Newton, shifting to the earliest stage of individual democratization by way of the birth of the United States, the intellectualizations by Benjamin Franklin and Albert Einstein, the European colonizations of most of the planet's topography, the liberation and democratization of former colonies, the liberalization of markets or market economies, or the so-called neoliberalism, the digital democratization propagated by Morse Law and the likes of Steve Jobs, they're on to the most recent COVID-19 development. We have arrived at a critical juncture where the decision tree has become more clear than ever. So clear that it pertains to humanity's very own survival in dealing with two compelling issues the seemingly unstoppable rising inequality in increasing parts of the world, and the unquenching thirst to mortgage the planet's environmental future for the simplicity, convenience, and at the same time, grandiosity of the current generation. On the first compelling case, studies have shown that 80% of the world's population earn merely $10 or less a day. Within this group, a meaningful portion 
still makes less than two dollars or less a day. The remaining 20 percent would earn disproportionately significantly more than 80 percent and control more than half of the wealth of the world. As much as statistics consistently show a widespread and accelerated reduction of poverty in many parts of the world, this rising tide hasn't necessarily buoyed all boats. Some boats have appeared much larger than others, while most are disappearing on the horizon. The Gini coefficient ratios in developed, developing and underdeveloped economies have tirelessly increased with no sign of slowing, much less cessation. This trend serves as an affront to the relatively weak and incapable, much further polarizing conversations around the world, as can be clearly evidenced in both the left and the right becoming their own separate eco chambers that are increasingly incapable of listening to and communicating with each other. Not only do the weak and incapable stand to lose, but the center and the centrality stand to diminish. Access to capital is essential for everyone as for every boat to be buoyed up while maintaining a true competitive spirit in humanity's endeavor towards betterment. The world is flushed with capital, i.e. money. There is more than a hundred trillion dollars worth of money supply circling the planet's global GDP of around 85 trillion dollars and 7.3 billion people. Nonetheless, much of that money goes to those that don't need it or are too credit worthy. Our generation, and particularly that of the future, must figure out the simple change so that money goes to those that need it and are borderline credit worthy. Financial inclusion needs to be game change for everyone with great ideas to be able to have access to capital. Digitization not only has to work at the speed prescribed by Moore's Law, but it also must be undertaken with a principled and regulated approach. Principled in that the end game must be undertaken with integrity, a moral compass, and include every boat. Regulated in that the government and the people must work together as to ensure that the endeavor does not only serve only the elitist interest of the elites controlling the planet. The second compelling issue is with respect to our planet. Humanity has emitted more than 1,400 gigatons of carbon thus far. Increasingly, unsurprisingly, most of that has been incurred only in the last 30 years, ever since globalization started reaching an unprecedented level. Our rate of carbon emission this year is likely to be around 50 to 60 gigatons. With no sign of abating by way of humanity's convenient embrace of conventional wisdom, i.e., coal, oil, and gas. With the planet's remaining carbon footprint and resource at roughly around three to four thousand gigatons, humanity, assuming no increase in our annual emission of carbon, shall have a finite future of around 60 years. The days of mortgaging our future for the present convenience must end. Again, a principled and regulated approach is something to consider. Principled in that we must have the integrity, moral compass, and conscience in that embracing conventional wisdom is actually very much a zero-sum game with respect to the environment's unclear and future danger. Renewable energy is costly, but a proposition that bears fruit in the future. The conversation on the principles of the environment often gets distorted by climate change deniers who have a predilection of not showing curiosity, much less science as a basis. The loss of curiosity is the loss to humanity. As much as history is endowed with them, 
The future is looking more stingy on second chances. We must strive to take a more regulated approach on the environment. On the preventive side, it starts with figuring out the right way of generating capital for both the government and the entrepreneurs. The government's fiscal space must be augmented with revenue generation that not only allows for an acceleration of renewable energy generation capabilities, but also assuages further capabilities of energy generation through conventional wisdom. Governments must also be proactive and consistent with incentivizing the procurement of renewable energy by the private sector. These would include streamlining and recalibration of pre-existing tariff and permitting regimes and disciplines. If none of these works, perhaps we might as well just consider walking. Walking from home to the office, walking from home to the campus, walking from home to the markets, and everywhere else. The age of surveillance capitalism is not only staring at, but enveloping us all together. Information and knowledge asymmetry has led to the elites knowing way much more than the overwhelming majority. The Facebook and Cambridge Analytica debacle is a clear reflection of how knowledge asymmetry entails the potential untenability of democracy. Democracy is supposed to entail symmetry of knowledge that would help ensure our own very sustainability and much more preciously, our future. In sum, these two compelling issues of inequality and climate change are the main course. As you graduate, past, today's, and future, are apprenticing in tools of public enterprise, social enterprise, and private enterprise, we caution you as to not get distracted. We caution you as not to get distorted by the appetizers or desserts of humanity's narrative. This is not to say you're not entitled to or cannot have some fun in life, without which your curiosity only becomes more attenuated. Our striving to take a principled and regulated approach can only be more pronounced and punctuated by staying the moral and ethical course. We have seen far too many examples of leaderships in public, social, and private enterprises that have not walked the talk, have not showed the necessary moral or ethical leadership on important issues, or even have taken a winner-takes-all attitude. You must anchor yourselves in the right narrative so that all boats gallantly float and sail with proper rudders. You all must have the necessary prescience, gumption, mental fortitude to shape all our future. A lot and everything are at stake. Your consistency and perseverance will reflect upon your ability to show leadership with respect to your family, community, country, nation, and the world. Many congratulations class of 2019 and class of 2020. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.